Right, back to a more familiar camera angle, and the reason I've uh, started up this video again is I've just removed the nut, uh, the strings and the nut and the neck from this um, Ernie Ball Access guitar. I say remove the neck, I've not removed the neck yet, I've taken out the screws out of the uh, neck plate. Five screws on this one, Ernie Ball, and the reason I'm going to show you I've done this video right now is something just basically to show where we are with this guitar to show the condition and state of things before I move on to work because this is a little bit uh, surprising to me so I'm going to get it actually on the on camera and there you go there's a guitar now nothing on toward you see five screws have come out here I've already taken the locking nut off from the back there blah 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 you'll see well you won't see there you'll use off camera at the moment but I wanted to show this area in particular because I thought I saw some little lines on it and I thought is that a little scratch in the paintwork and I wanted to just zoom in and have this on camera so I've just taken my screws out I've not got my neck off yet and there you go the indentation in the back there and chipping's here as well that to me a little bit shoddy, I believe. Quite a deep indentation in there. I just wanted to show that for when I pour everything back because there's scratches, cracks and stuff around here. Why didn't we just go with four a big bigger plate like they do on normal guitars? I don't know. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to show that, just wanted to highlight that. So as you can see, I'm gonna turn this over and show where we are now. I've not removed the neck, I'm going to turn it all over as one because I've taken necks out and neck pockets before and big chunks of paint have come out with them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a bit careful about it and there you go and I'm going to and let's see where this one comes out really really easily there you go no problem, shims under there as you can see I'm going to leave that as is and I'm going to zoom in on that because I'm going to leave that intact because that's obviously how the guitar is set up and it's a pro someone set it up before the owner's obviously happy with how it's set up so I'm not going to alter any of that and these pickups look nice by the way I love zebras running to zebra pickups so there you go so I'm going to zoom right out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard the body in a moment and I'm going to concentrate on the neck so what I'm going to do is put it about right there about right there I think let me zoom right out yeah, I've got a camera a little bit closer than I normally would. So there you go, that's some body off. Now there's the body. I've cut the strings at this end. The tremolo sat right back and trying to jump out there, blah, blah, blah. Let's get some under that a little bit before it starts to mark the guitar. Because that's what we'll do. Oh, it's just come straight off. That's good. Right, there you go. So the springs have come straight off there anyway. That'll be removed. Again, that's why I'm not into these type of guitars that sit with a guy top man because it does mark the guitar not really it's going to alter anything just basically going to show where we are with this guitar um, but that's it a bit of chipping around this area again you know something I've got to be more aware of when I work on guitars I've got to inspect guitars thoroughly before I, I actually start doing any work on them because uh, Sometimes it can lead to me having to put things right at my own expense, things that are not really my fault. But as you see, as a guitar comes to me and it comes into these premises, it then becomes my responsibility. And I'm taking on the responsibility of that guitar. I recently had a Fender come in with a truss rod snapped, but I'd said to the owner before, I says, I'm not happy with that truss rod, that's not in right. You know, what I should have said was, if I touch that, and if anything goes wrong with that truss rod, you've got to not blame me for it going wrong, because it was wrong anyway. Which the guy was absolutely totally understanding. And uh, I did go and get it fixed, and it went again. But the guy was really understanding about it. He said, look, I know it's not your fault. It was ripped off, blah, 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 blah. So there you go, just to cover me, myself, and I, um, basically. So I've got the tremolo off, I've got the locking nut off, I've got this, this, there are shims uh, here as well. Oh God, there's an half a shim there. Have you ever seen half a shim? There's even half a shim there, so I don't know how that works. Now, luckily, I've got shims in. I've got my own shims in stock, so if I need to shim anything up, we can get there with the knot, and I can redo that. Add another shim under there. So there's half a shim there. I'd imagine that's been put on. I can tell where it's been put. It's been put on the. I 
I think it's been put on the high east side. Let's have a look where we are here. No, I'm not quite sure. We'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, there were quite a lot of shims on there. Didn't notice when I was taking them off. So we'll sort them shims out later anyway. Blah 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 blah. They were all there. They were there for a reason. I am reluctant to uh, shim just one side more than the other, but we'll see where we are when we come to balancing the tremolo later. So there you go, this is what we're all concerned about at the moment. Um, the neck. I could remove the tuners. Maybe I'll make things a little bit easier when I do the reflet. I'm going to remove the tuners. But what I'm going to do is now I'm going to get prepared, I'm going to prepare to get these frets moved. Now I'm going to have a go at one without using heat. But I imagine these are glued in. I, I would be reluctant to remove these without using heat. So I'm going to crack on with that. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to prep the area, I'm going to get a solder iron out, get my heat source ready, then we're going to have a look at removing these frets. So I'll be back again with an update in a while. So back with the axis. I know the cab, I've not moved the camera, the camera's not in the place where it needs to be, but I've, I just want to come back and show a little bit of an update on the axis. I've removed the neck, obviously. I took all the hardware off the neck, um, realised that the tuners are maybe a little bit staggered, they've got different numbers on them, so I've numbered where they go in relation to the numbers on the back of the tuners. Number four, number three, two, two, one, one. All the old ways off. <coughs> Got the frets out, remove the frets. Uh, and I've been and altered the truss rod and what I've done is gone across the neck and made sure it's perfectly flat, which it is in all areas, uh, on the edges, on both edges and in the middle. The reason I do that is now I know it's perfectly level, I can take a radius block, 10 inch radius block, and I can go across this neck and I can take off all this glue and whip out a bit of this uh, Mojo Patina discoloration. But I can sand the top of this, just get it all smooth, because what I want to be doing is getting all these little bits of residue glue off, and I'm going to clean up the slots at the sides, and then I can get it all prepared, ready for getting the new, uh, new frets in. Now, I don't need to... Um, oh, it's a varnish taken off the neck, the looks of that. All right, I don't need to get this jigged up or anything, uh, because I know it's perfectly straight. All I need to do is get a radius plot. I've got radius plots here. Uh, I've got a number 10 here. There's my number 10. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know why it's got two bits of paper on there. Glue different. I'm going to replace the paper on that. And I'm going to just go up and down. Just remove that glue. This might work. But this ain't going to keep it clean. What I'm going to do is I go across. All I'm doing here is just removing that top bit of glue. I'm going to get this clamped up on the other board in a minute, on the other bench in a bit. All we need to do is remove the glue with this, so, you know, I'm doing it as you see, uh, as you're watching. So all we're doing, we ain't got to take anything great off. What I'll do is then is I'll go over with some white spirit on this guitar. Uh, we'll get it all cleaned up. That's the glue more or less removed, look. I can glue straight on over there. I'm going to get some white spruce on there, get this all cleaned up. Because this will need oiling, I believe. Uh, I'll just treat this with some lemon oil after. I don't want to take the oil that's soaked in, I don't want to take any layers of anything off. Just need to take off the top little bit of that glue. Don't need to scrape anything. Um, and it's going to be absolutely fine. So I'm going to blob on with that. Get it, like I said, get it cleaned up, get all the slots cleaned. I'll go through the slots with a... Could go through with a uh, exacto knife, clean all them slots up. You've seen me doing this many times before. And we get it all prepped for um, getting the new frets in. Now, what I haven't done is I haven't accurately measured these old frets. I'm going to do that when I find my uh, caliper, which I don't know what I've done with it. I've seen it knocking about somewhere. What have I done with that caliper? Right, what I'll do is I'll find my calipers and I'll come back to you um, as soon as I've got them. So yeah, found my calipers about four seconds after I stopped the video. Now, what I'm going to do is, I always go a little bit bigger when I'm replacing frets. Now, I know I measured, I had a rough measurement on this, I probably checked it up, but I know these are 2.4 wide. I'll put my caliper on. Now I'm going to measure these across, that way, get them perfectly level. And the caliper is saying 2.4 millimetres exactly. I'll just show you this. Well, it's 2.4. We say 2.41 now. I said 2.40 a second ago. It's about 2.4. Uh, 
Um, we're going to measure the height of the frets, which is saying 2.8, 2.78. Make sure we're perfectly. Uh, what's that saying? 2.79, which is 2.8. And we're going to measure the height of the fret itself, and I know it's 1.1, and that is saying 1.07. So that's 1.1 millimeters. Now the fret wire I'm replacing with is 18% nickel silver. 18% nickel silver is harder than regular fret wire. Regular fret wire is 12% nickel silver. Stainless. I don't know where our bar is, but this sits between regular fret wire and stainless so it's not so heavy on the tools yet it's longer lasting this will last this should last 12 years 15 years it's the stuff i'm using lately instead of a, i was buying hosco stuff which is again the same 18 percent it's double the price i'm not paying a lot for this i've got a good supplier and i'm buying um this is a 2.7 mil you can also get it 2.9 mil but i'm going 2.7 wide so it's going to be a little bit wider it's uh it's more or less just getting on to a jumbo. It's 2. Point, I say 2.69, which is 2.7. Again, the height is 2.9 exactly. So it's a tiny, tiny bit higher. And the height of the fret, I believe, is 1.05. It's say 1.5. So it's 1.13. So it's exactly the same height as the old fret. Yet it shouldn't need crowning. It should be longer lasting. It should last long. It's already crowned. So I'm going to go with this. Sometimes I like to go with 1.3 height on the fret, but Rob expressed that he wanted to, um, he didn't want any higher frets. So I've gone for a fret which is virtually the same height as what's coming off um, without any, any uh, leveling. That way we can leave the nut as is, the nut can be the same height. We've always got to take into consideration when we're putting on new fret wire how it's going to act in relation to the nut. Uh, this being a very heavily shimmed um, a locking nut, it means we can put less shims in there, we can have a better action, get a little bit more, uh, probably get a little bit more work out of the tremolo as well. So that's what I'm going to go with. So, like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on, I'm going to rub this, I'm going to get all the glue, the glue's virtually all off now, but I'm going to get all the glue off, give it a good clean, uh, and then we can get it all over to the other bench over there, and we can look at getting the new frets pressed in. I'm going to glue them in um, as I've started doing now, just show here we've got. We've got some, we've not really got any chipping at all. We've got some tiny, tiny chipping. Uh, there's a little chip there. It's going to be absolutely nothing to drop fill that. We've got a little tiny chip there. These are all going to go under the frets anyway. Uh, but no chipping to speak of. It makes it so much easier on this maple neck when there's no, when it's not glossed over. It's not um, clear coated because they clear coat the frets as well. But then you have to start cutting down the sides with a scalpel blade and cut through the. Uh, the nitro or acrylic or whatever it is so that's it so pretty straightforward a uh, little bit more of a sanding get it cleaned up uh, and i'll come back with an update or i'll come back when i'm getting the frets press i might even come back when the frets are in uh, whatever you know how this all works uh, there's no point in me showing you every single thing i do um, i'll just come back with an update again later back soon right just a quick update on the um axis neck i've started refretting i've done four that end Four hour end. You might be saying, why are you doing two ends at once? Well, I'll show you a reason. I'll get a length of the... Uh, I buy this in eight inch lengths. And if you do two one end, or two another end, you get four pieces out. Starting from the furthest end, you do two and two. Then you come in, you do two and two. Where they get less and they get more, it balances out perfect. Otherwise, if you went from this end, you'd get three a strip. Three a strip. Then you start getting four, so you're wasting two pieces. So you get eight strips of this, you get four. I buy, I buy, these, buy these in lots of eight, so I buy eight strips, I get four per eight strips. That's 32 frets. Now, when I'm doing a 22 fretter, it gives me 10 frets spare. So every time I do three fret jobs, I get a free fret job. But he's thinking about it. Write that one down, back soon.